Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. Today's video is gonna be the first in a series of videos about my chicken coop build, which I modeled after Carolina Coops. If you wanna know who they are, I'll put a link uh, in the description below so you can check their site, site out. Um, they, they actually make uh, coops and they'll even ship them in parts where you just you know where all the walls come on a pallet you can it's a lot easier to assemble um, but I'm gonna build my own just kind of modeled after their design and it's gonna take me uh, several weeks to do it and so this is the this is today's video is just the first video where I'm just laying the foundation now if you saw one of my earlier videos I don't know if you've got the feel of my yard yet or not but my original plan was to have the coop over here and I'd have to trim some branches I don't want to have to trim. And so I've decided to, to do it over here. Uh, as we go through this video, I'm gonna just kind of I, uh, fast forward through the, the build process and I'll stop periodically um, and explain what I'm doing. This is a few days later um, and so I'll just, uh, as I play that, I'll, I'll go through and explain what I'm doing and hopefully it'll be interesting to you. <clears throat> the main thing we're gonna be doing today is, I, I'm, the foundation I'm building is, sorry, we got a plane going by. Uh, the foundation that I'm building is basically just four by sixes. Um, and I have to com connect them uh, end to end um, and get them all straight and and then I, once I get them all connected and I just use some metal plates, uh, uh, some metal plates that you, that you put screws in to hold them end to end. So I'll get those all, all straight because it's the, the footprint of the coop and the run is going to be, uh, see the coops, it's gonna be 18 feet long and eight feet wide. And the coop itself is gonna be at that end which will be a four by eight. So it'll be a big coop. Um, and uh, so I, I get the two by sixes uh, all square, uh, tw you know, eight foot wide by 20 uh, foot or 18 foot long, I mean. And then I gotta get them all level. So um, the one part I didn't uh, get filmed was when I had my brother or my son-in-law actually out there uh, helping me measure um, from corner to corner um, if, if you when you got a rectangle or a square if you if you measure from opposite corner to opposite corner um, when the measurements are equal then you know it's square um, and that part I didn't get filmed but just as as I have time to work on the coop uh, I'll, I'll do the videos in stages and I hopefully it'll be uh, interesting to you guys and anyway we'll go from there so Appreciate you watching. Also, if you get any benefit out of any of these videos, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the uh, the video, especially like the video. That really helps with Google algorithms. And then hit the little uh, bell notification if you want to see future videos. That'll notify you when we do future videos. So, appreciate it. Let's get going. Okay, so you can see I have one of the 10 foot four by sixes laid up on my miter saw stand. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting them to length because I needed 18 foot between the two of them. And then I'm measuring there because I was going to do what they call a half lap joint, which when you're butting two pieces of lumber up together, a half lap joint is supposed to be a really strong way to join two boards. Um, but I didn't have the right saw for that. So what I decided to do was I bought these metal plates um, that I put over the end of each board and with some decking screws I was able to screw them together. Here's a picture of me with the metal plates and if you look off to the right side of my face where those uh, 4x6s are joined together you can see if you got a big enough image you can see uh, one of those plates screwed there. The big thing here is you just need to make sure you use decking screws or um, some kind of screw that isn't going to rust that's going to last forever and so that's that's what I did there and then here this image here is a picture of me with a spike it's about a seven inch spike uh, or nail 
I used uh, several of these in each of the corners to nail the the uh, four by sixes together at the corners and surprisingly um, I was really pleased with how they did um, they didn't try to bend on me at all they were easy to nail in just with a regular hammer and it, uh, it, it worked really 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 good I was really really happy with how it all went together there okay so you can see me what I'm doing is I'm combining the 8 foot and 10 foot lengths together and I'm attaching one of the plates on one side there and then I roll I have a board underneath it a 10 foot length board underneath it so that as I attach the other plate I can make sure that it the two together are as straight as, as the original board and I um, secured one end a little bit better than the other so I had to do redo one and then I'm trying to make it sure it's straight with the level and then I, I get it situated and I get it leveled there and I had to do some digging uh, the spot was pretty level that I was in but I had to do a little bit of dig digging to get the high spots out and so then now I'm putting together the second board um, the second 18 foot long section and I'm doing it basically exactly the same way and uh, screwing that together then I have to flip it over make sure it's straight on the other board and then secure the other side so that's what you're seeing me do there and then once I get that uh, done and I get it pretty straight um, then I I cut that one to length. I guess I hadn't cut the eight foot length on that one yet. And so then I get that all cut and then I start working on the, the other side there. Now I bring in the, uh, the eight foot end lengths and um, I, I put it in there and I try to just get it as square as I can with, you know, eyesighting it. And what I'm doing here now is I'm measuring that because I want, I want to cut off enough of the, the end section. The end section was eight foot long to begin with. Um, but I want, when it's attached um, to the, I want it inside. And so I had to, had to cut off enough so that it's once I uh, attach it to the other boards, the whole thing combined is only eight foot. So that's what I was uh, measuring there. And then I did that, I just used the, other, the one that I had the right length as a model to measure and cut the other end. So then I began to, this. you see me hoeing to get it level. I had a little more work to do on this side to get it level. Uh, and then you'll see me working here, uh, uh, squaring it up a little bit or leveling it up. And I had to dig it out wide enough because I knew when I tried to square this at the end that I would need to do, you know, that I need enough room, enough dug out so that I can adjust it. Because as eyeballing it, you never get it exactly square like you think you're going to, um, or even close. So there I'm, I'm digging out the, the long section here and uh, then I get it all set up and there I'm digging it out a little wider because I'm remembering, oh yeah, I'm going to have to adjust this side too probably. And then I get it all pretty much uh, leveled out. Now the, the part of this that you won't see is when I measure from corner to corner. That part, my battery died and I wasn't able to, to film. I had my son-in-law come out and we measured it and we got it all square. But here you see me getting everything level and then it was just a matter of getting it all square. Hi, this is a different day than when I uh, filmed most of this video. But I wanted to show you, if you saw my earlier video with my backyard, I had a, a huge brush pile. And I'm gonna show you here that I chipped up that brush pile, what you still see sitting there is a, a stump that was at the bottom of the brush pile. That was uh, 
uh, the people that owned the house before had pulled that stump and never hauled it away. And when we pruned, we just kind of set the uh, all the brush on top of it. But we chipped it all up, and the chipper worked fine. But I'm going to show you over here, and you can hear my little girls. Hi, girls. I got them out running around the yard, so they're following me around, hoping I got a treat on me. Um, but anyway, I want to show you, this is the chips. You can see that what came out of that chipper is really stringy, stringy stuff. And I got more than I probably need for this uh, pin. I may have to move some of it out of here. It's just, it's not ideal. I mean, it would be a lot better if it was actual chips and not, not wood strings. Um, well, so when I, when I put it all in here, I didn't think it would fill up quite that much. But anyway, so we'll see how that works. Um, but I just wanted to show you that that's where the compost ended up. And then I'll show you what I have left. Hang on. Sorry for the wind. Okay, so if you can see over here, uh, I've moved these out here where they wouldn't, you know, they're kind of in the bushes where they won't hurt the grass, but that's how much chi chips I have left over that uh, I'll use later as mulch in different places. But again, it's really, really stringy and sticky, meaning having having small sticks in it. It's not what I expected to get from, from the chipper, but uh, turn lemons into lemonade, right? Okay, well that's it. I hope that was interesting to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're still watching, I appreciate you watching the video clear to the end. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks so much.